is a crowded room. Hey YouTube. So in, in my last video, I actually mentioned that I might do a video on uh, Logos A-List and I had a lot of positive responses from you guys that you wanted to hear what I thought of the series. And before I give my uh, opinion, I kind of want to let a few things be known. One, I'm a reality TV junkie. I will watch any reality TV on series. You know, from The Bachelor to The Amazing Race to uh, Survivor. Um, I have been a huge reality TV fan probably since Survivor started and you know it's been a way for me uh, to really watch how other people live their lives. Um, sometimes there you know there's a lot of make-believe that goes into these reality series but in general I'm a people watcher I'm a big voyeur so you know it has definitely you know reality TV has you know filled my voyeuristic need and it has allowed me to really get caught up in other people's lives now also before I start this video uh, Brian is completely against me making this video so if you hate us afterwards, completely hate Jay, don't hate Brian, because he is not a fan of the A-list. Um, he is not a fan of reality TV. I cannot get him to watch TV, reality TV with me. So it's something I tend to do by myself. So the fact that you guys want to hear my opinion on the A-list is kind of exciting. Um, also, you know, opinions are like a-holes. Everybody has one. I'm no different. I have my own opinions. And before I start talking about the A-list in general, you know, the gay community is a huge, diverse community, and that's kind of why I put the rainbow flag behind me. Because we all have to remember, even if we don't agree or like or understand other people in our community, we are all different. We all need to choose the way we live our lives. Um, we all have our own um, ways of dealing with things. So I don't want to judge the people on the A-list. You know, I basically have my opinions on what I think of them. And, you know, we all have, like, our, our own opinions, which, like I said before, you know, it's kind of like a-holes. We all have one. Um, and I'm no different. But, you know, before I start really talking about the A-list and letting you guys know what it is, you know, I'm not so much disappointed in the people on the A-list because they are probably a reflection of a small percentage of the gay community. The people that I'm most disappointed in is Logo. Um, Logo is a gay and lesbian TV station that, in my opinion, hasn't done much for the gay community. I mean, they really have, you know, neglected showing the diversity of our community. And for this to be their first real reality TV series based on gay men's lives, it's really disappointing. And if anybody is to blame for the A-list, it's Logo. And I wish, you know, if, if, if Logo wants to put on a series about gay men like this, I would hope that they would put on other different reflections of our lives. You know, give a, give a diverse view of what it means to be gay in America or gay in the world and not just focus on the traditional, stereotypical roles of what it means to be a gay person. So let's go ahead and just do a, a really quick uh, run-through of the A-list and its uh, cast. There's actually six main characters on the cast, and I'll introduce you to them. My name is Mike Ruiz and probably one of the most in-demand celebrity photographers in the world. He could pick me up by my neck. He could throw me across the room. He's kind of like the aunt that would wear like the leopard print dress and smoke butts and like tell you to sneak out. He's like a big brother, like big sexy brother. Okay, so that's Mike, and he is not a major player in the A-list. He is one of the few characters that I think probably has some real genuine ideas on what it means to be a gay man living in New York. I mean, he obviously has struggled to get his career together, and he is an incredible photographer. I mean, I've not seen a picture of his that I haven't liked. And he's kind of the character that pops in throughout the series that kind of keeps everybody together. You know, he's kind of the common sense among the group. Um, I don't really have anything bad to say about, you know, Mike. I think he's incredibly talented. If anything, he's, you know, he's, he's a very, uh, I don't want to say vain person, but definitely, you know, he cares a lot more about his uh, looks and maybe body than I do. And, you know, I think that a lot of people in general think that all gay people, that's like our obsession. And I don't think it is. I mean, from my experiences in the gay community, I don't know that we are as obsessed with our bodies and looks as people want us to think we are. So, you know, I mean, if you look at any gay magazine, if you look at any gay video, if you look at any gay, you know, TV series, we all have to be perfect. We all have to have perfect bodies. Okay? So, the next person, take a look. I live with my husband in a penthouse with panoramic views. He's definitely my Mr. Beck. Most of the stuff Ryan wears, those items are one-time wear only. I'm turning 30. You know I want to be smooth as a baby's ass. 
Okay, Ryan. Ryan, I think, is probably the sweetest guy on the series. I mean, he is genuinely a sweet person. Now, in this little clip I showed you, you probably don't see that much of Ryan being so sweet. But the problem is, is Ryan's in a long-term relationship, and he's actually in the process of trying to adopt with his partner. Now, they don't show any of that in the series. All they do is focus on him being bitchy and kind of backstabbing and a little bit uh, conniving. And you really don't get to see how sweet he is. I mean, every once in a while, they'll show you a little bit of the sweetness that Ryan is. And I think, you know, initially he was one of my least favorite characters. But by the end of the series, he's probably one of my favorites. And I wish that the A-list had taken a little bit of time just to dig into that part of his life. They never really showed his partner. They never really showed, you know, the love and commitment between the two of them. The only reason we know that is there is because Ryan, whenever he talks about his partner, it's kind of like when I talk about Brian, he glows. And, you know, when, when you see someone glow about the person they're with, that they, you know, that they are going to spend their life with, you know it's true love and you know that they genuinely mean something in their lives. So Ryan definitely has a spot in my heart. He's one of the characters on this show that I wouldn't mind meeting and hanging out with. So uh, let's, let's move on. I'm Riken Lemcool. My claim to fame is that I've won The Amazing Race and I was in a very public relationship with Lance Bass. I see him walking with these like cargo pants, these big muscles, and the next thing you know he's like crying at brunch. If I wanted Riken today, I could step out and make a phone call and that would be it. You left just to talk to Austin? Nice. I met Rodney seven months ago and we've been with each other ever since. Hot, arm candy, Brazilian, homeless couch surfer. He's bisexual. I like both. Yeah. Riken's only the second guy I slept with. It's a little single white female. But... Riken and Rodney, they are the predominantly gay couple in the series. And they are... Riken's probably the reason I started watching the A-List. Uh, as you, I said earlier, I'm a huge Amazing Race fan. And Riken was one of the first gay couples ever featured on the Amazing Race, him and his long-term partner. At that time, they were in a long-term relationship and they actually won the Amazing Race. And so I've always, you know, I've always had a small place in my heart for Riken. I've always seen him in a very positive, uh, as a positive role model for the gay community. You know, having a long-term partner, uh, being in a serious relationship, you know, and, you know, working hard together until the A-list. Uh, after watching the A-list, I've lost all respect for Riken. I mean, he just completely abuses his boyfriend, Rodney. Um, I think Rodney's a very sweet guy, and he's abused constantly on this show. Um, he, Riken takes advantage of him. He flirts with other guys. He's cheating on Rodney. Um, every other gay character is, like, hating on Rodney because Riken's the central figure in the series. Um, they call him a loser, you know, that he doesn't work, that he's, like, a leech on Riken, which, you know what? It's ridiculous. When you're in a, a serious relationship with another man, you know, it's it's a team. You're a couple. It's you guys against the world. It isn't, you know, what can Riken bring to the relationship, what can Rodney bring to the relationship when it comes in terms of, of money. Because there's more to a relationship than money. And, you know, being the main breadwinner in my relationship, I have never, ever, ever thought of Brian as being a leech on my relationship. He brings as much to this relationship as I do. Maybe not financially, but in every other way. So I was really disappointed in seeing Riken, you know, allowing Roddy to be portrayed in such a negative way on this on this series. And to me, if you love somebody, that would never happen. You would never allow people to talk about them in such a negative way. So I've really, really become disappointed in, in Riken, uh, you know, and, and I hope in the next season he will be able to really, you know, shine. Because uh, this series has really, really uh, left a bad taste in my mouth. My name is on every VIP list in this city. I have a fabulous life. Derek is like the evil stepmother who marries your old rich father. Girls wake up and put on makeup. I put on my spray tan. You're a big queenie ass, ass bitch. Tiny big mother you don't cross me. Okay, Derek. Um, Derek drives me crazy. And the reason why Derek drives me crazy is because you can tell that Derek is a really insecure person. He's very successful in his, in his in his in his work life. You know, you can tell that he just wants to be in a long term relationship and be loved, and it just hurts watching him. I mean, you can tell that Derek needs somebody in his life. He really wants to be loved, but he's got all these conditions. He has a million conditions on who he should be with, what kind of person he should be with, instead of just allowing you know life to bring him who he's supposed to be with. Um, he's a very hateful person in the series. I mean, he's constantly bagging on other people. He picks on people. He attacks their bodies. You know, he, he just, you know, he's a stereotypical mean gay. And I really wish, you know, that you can obviously see that there's more to Derek than that. And I really hope, you know, I really wish they had shown that because they really didn't. Um, 
you know, and Derek's got to start liking himself. And I think when he starts liking himself, he won't attack other people so much. Um, and hopefully in season two, we'll be able to see that. I was a high fashion model. My biggest claim to fame would have to be the time that I spent with fame designer Marc Jacobs. I broke a rule. I was out on the street with two trash bags and my brand new Louis Vuitton duffel bag. There is not a market for fat, pasty models. He has a nice ass. I don't understand what product he would sell. Maybe bacon. Okay, Austin. Um, what can you say about Austin? Austin's young, and you can tell by his behavior in the series that he really... He, you know, some people are age young. He's emotionally young. And throughout this series, he's chasing Riken. He really, really, you can tell, wants some type of a physical, emotional relationship with Riken. And he does everything he can to break up Riken and Rodney's relationship during the series. The funny joke to the whole thing is he has a boyfriend back in England who's adorable, who's sweet and genuine and just great. And the series Never Talks really shows that relationship. They never really show Austin, you know, talking about how much he loves his partner, you know, until Austin has a falling out with Riken. And it seems like he just, it, you know, I, I I, really hope that, that Austin's partner back in England, watch, you know, when he watches this series, he can help bring Austin around. Um, also, you know, Austin is constantly called fat in this series. He's called, you know, fat. And I'm like, what? He's incredible. He has an incredible body. He's a beautiful, you know, young guy. And how could anybody look at his body and, and, and make fun of it and say he's fat? You know, and it's, it's, it's really disturbing to watch that. Um, being gay, you know, I don't care if you're large, small, thin, husky. You know, we as a gay community, we have all types. And I think all types are sexy. It's not so much the body. It's the way you carry yourself. It's your personality. It's, it's if you're genuine or not. And, you know, I mean, there are men that I find attractive that are, you know, 300 pounds. There are men that are really skinny that I find attractive. And I think, you know, looks is just a small part of who an individual is. And Austin has an incredible, normal guy's body. And for anybody to really call him fat blows my mind. Um, so, Austin, you know, it, it's nice that you love your body because obviously it doesn't bother you when people cap on you. And that I was really impressed by. Because, you know, I mean, we all have our insecurities, and it's nice to see that you haven't fallen into them. You know, you know you, you have a nice body, and, you you know, you're not ashamed of it. And every time I see you get naked and jump in a pool and flaunt it at the people who are making fun of you, gives me some respect for you. So, you know, you need to grow maturity-wise a little bit. You need to, you know, you know, figure out where you want to be and stop worrying about what everybody else thinks of you, and I think you'll do fine. Well, next time, uh, you know, I hope you liked the video. Brian completely is probably rolling his eyes that I made this video, but um, I like talking about reality TV. Until next time, take care. Everybody say goodbye. Goodbye.